Hi, this is TJ with ShopBot Tools. Thanks for joining us today. Today's online training is going to be about restarting a file mid-cut. Sometimes you have something that happens like you broke a bit or um, you lost power, you had to come back to a file, time was an issue. So if you're, say, hour, hour and a half into a file and um, now you got to start over, you really don't want to sit there and have to cut air for an hour and a half. And sometimes it gets complicated going into the uh, coding and, and changing things around. So I'm going to show you a neat feature that's built right into the uh, ShopBot control software that allows you to start uh, mid-cut. So with that being said, let's get going. Give you a quick intro to where we're going with this. We've got some video and some files that we're going to look at. So. Uh, most of us right now are using either the VCarve Pro or we're using our Aspire, which are our wonderful Vectric products that we'll be using for drawing. And the way I say they're so wonderful is they make it for so simple for users like you and me to come in here and draw these types of projects without having to sit here and write all the different lines of code, which is how they used to have to do it when it was just NC before the CNC world. So let's just look at one part here. I call this our Swiss cheese plate and the reason I call it that is it is a series of holes that need to be cut out and this makes a fixture and then we put these little circuit boards inside these and then all these little circuit board parts will sit in there and then the shop bot will come back around to these circuit boards that are in there and actually mill out the different tracks and stuff that they need to be for our probe parts. So we're actually looking at a, f a part that we use for production um, out of our shop bots. So for a lot of us, we're at the point here where we can come in, we can draw the part that we want to go and cut on the machine. We get our drawing set, we come over here and we create a tool path for that part. And this is where you would come in, create the tool path, and we preview it and, and see we see what's either going to work or not going to work. And, and I think a lot of us do take this for granted. I mean, look how simple this was for for someone to draw this tool path it and preview it and, and, and kind of look at it now before we go out to the machine and accidentally screw up a very valuable piece of material or break a very expensive bit. So uh, this would be what a lot of us users are just going to see is on the CAD, CAD end of it here. But what we don't see on the back side of this is all the coding that goes in it. And you got to understand the coding to be able to restart a file. Because you're actually going to restart a file using a line of code that you stopped on. So to show you that, once you are done with this drawing, we would come here and we save our tool paths. So this is different than saving the drawing. We're not saving the drawing itself. That's just the drawing that we can come back to and maybe modify it if we had to. What we're doing here is we're saving a tool path, which is uh, a going to post process, or what I like to say is convert this picture here, these lines of vectors, into lines of code that the machine can read. So we're going to save that. So then, if you look at this. In my folder here, you see I've got Swiss cheese, the drawing file we looked at, and then when I hit save down here to save the tool path, what it does is it converts that drawing line that drawing of vectors and lines and converts it to here, which is the shopbot code. This is a version uh, a variation I'm sorry of uh, G code. And this is what the machine actually reads. It reads numbers. Uh, for us to draw like this, this would take a lot longer and, <laughs> and be a lot more work and tedious than what the vector guides would come up for us to do with VCar Pro and the Aspire. So let's take a look. To understand how to restart a file, we've got to understand what's going on with these lines of code. Up top here, it's explaining the material size. It's explaining where things are zeroed. It's telling us the bits we're going to use, the material thickness. And we could get into all this with a training on just coding. But what we want to understand here is this very left column, where you can see it counting down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And what it does on this one is it, for the Swiss cheese file, that one I showed you, just the circles, this has 1,555 lines of code. Each one of these lines is the, mach is the software telling the machine where to go. And what exactly are those numbers? Well, those numbers are 
movements in X, Y, and Z. So right here you can see just jog Z to 1.5 inch. Now jog three axes, J3, X, Y, Z. So it's constantly telling it where to go. So each line has a new position for the shop bot. So we're going to find ourselves as users sometime down the road getting into a position where we either break a bit, we lose power, we have to come back. So that's where we're going to go with today's training. Let's start out by seeing this in a video format. Let's cut out this Swiss cheese. So here's our shop bot, ready to go. We got our material held down, and we go over and we start uh, cutting out our parts. So we're cutting this out of a uh, HDPE plastic, and you can see it's making two pass depths to get all the way through. It goes down, goes around, and has a step over. The bit steps out. That quarter inch bit is used to draw that one inch hole. And here it is showing the full size machine. We're just using the front portion of it. So this is taking time right now. This is machining time. You know, this is this is money, either you know made or lost when you're depending on your CNC machine to be up and running. Well, right now, where it's doing what it needs to do, it's cutting parts, it's making money, it's making product for us. But there's going to be a time down the road where something happens, broke a bit, you're using wood, maybe you ran into a knot. Maybe you just made a mistake and put in the wrong feeds and speeds and you snapped off a bit. Um, where this thing's about ready to break a bit is about nine minutes into this file. So that's nine minutes of cutting that's already happened. So what I need to do is, first of all, if you have a bit, you need to make sure you extract whatever part out. Because if you go and run this again and you run into that bit, you're just going to break the next bit into that piece of metal. So make sure you get that pulled out of there. Alright, so let's pause the video and, and take a step back. So what we did is we ran our file for about nine minutes. And and what we did in there is we went in and we had to open up our shopbot command. I went file, file part load, project switch cheese, open, OK. It's going to ask me if I have the right bit. Is it going to ask me if I'm zeroed? And I'm making sure I read all this stuff before I go ahead and click. And the machine makes a noise. It's about ready to move. Now look at in the blue here. It's reading those different lines of code. It's telling us where it's at. It's moving along. It's on line 53, 54, 55. So it's telling us the line of code. Over on the right hand side in the red, we're seeing the actual placement of our X, our Y, and our Z axes. So this thing's going to keep moving along and moving along and uh, just to stop it before it actually broke in the in the video, it broke at line 492. So for me to stop right now, I can hit spacebar and it stops this. And I've got some options. I can quit. If I got, I can resume if I needed to get back into it. Uh, insert command nudge. CRSB3 software tutorials for more of this. But we're gonna quit because we just broke a bit. So if I broke a bit. Uh oh, I broke my bit. Where did I break it at? Well, luckily for us, um, there's a way to turn on feature that will allow you to record where, uh, what line you left off at. So let's look at a couple different ways of finding that. <clears throat> so in Shopbot 3 software, when you open this up, scroll along the top here if you go over to values, and then you go down to D. Values, display values. And in here, I am going to be able to go down here and find write part logs, write part file logs. Uh, when you install your software, these this comes off as don't write. And the reason for that is just there's different operating systems out there that sometimes causes troubles with the SP3 software. So if this is something that I would definitely recommend you turn on because what this is going to do is going to write a log of every time you run that file if it finished, where it finished, if it did not finish, what line it stopped at, what date you ran this at, how long it took. So 
values, display values, and go ahead and turn that uh, right part files log on. And if your system log is off, go ahead and turn that on too. That'll save everything that you do in here down in your SB parts file. So I've turned that on. And let me just show you this again, why that's important to have. So first of all, we'll go back and simulate what we did. Project Swiss Cheese. I'm running this file normal, just like we would any other file, hoping that everything is <laughs> hoped for. So there it is. It's reading the lines of code, and it's going through. And again, I don't want it to have to wait till where we broke a bit, which was line 492. We'll simulate we broke it right now. So when I hit stop right there, what it did is it just brought up stop hit. And right here is even another reference. It says current line you're at is 58. So it's telling you where it's at. But now that I have that log turned on, if I look in my Swiss cheese folder, I will see where it says Swiss cheese. And right here it says did not complete stopped at line 492 which is where it did in the video it had been running for 9 minutes and 22 seconds to get that far tells me the date that this happened um, time file all that's built right into this so this is kinda telling me whoa hey line 492 is where this thing stopped so if I wanna now go change a bit and come back uh, I would wanna start it before 4 92. Now some people might be watching going, hey, I know an easy way around this. All they have to do is come back into my file. What I've got toolpath, I just deselect the ones that it already drilled, hit recalculate, and just drill these ones out and I'm fine. Well, that would work, yes. If this is a one or a two Z of a part, boom, that's a good, simple, quick fix. On the other hand, it's not that good of a fix if this is something you're going to come back to over and over again. Also, it's not going to work on a very large file. For you guys that start getting into doing 3D carvings, like this bison here, which is uh, a bison, I'm sorry, is <clears throat> a 2 inch thick piece that's 24 inches by 24 inches using an 8 inch ball nose tape or tape or ball nose. Look at this. Look how deep this thing goes down here. Look at the detail that it's doing. All right, this is a very big file. So if you saw how big the uh, lines of code were for the Swiss cheese, think of how many lines of code there's going to be for a bison, and also think how long this is going to take. This is probably about a three and a half, four hour file. So to carve that out, and it's worth every minute of it because look at how beautiful resolution that it came out so yeah look at that's a three and a half hour file so some of you are saying hey just go back in and edit the code well you can't do that in 3d and let's go look at the lines of code for this guy as well so the bison has goes all the way down 556,480 lines of code. So, you imagine trying to write that one by hand. So that's why this restart I'm going to show you is an important thing to do. So, what we would do is we change our bit. We'd, we'd re-zero our bit. Then what we need to do is come in and do this file go to that is built into our um, ShopBot 3 software. So again, I showed you this before. On the Swiss cheese, we stopped at line 492. We're 9 minutes and 22 seconds in. I got my bit changed. I'm going to re-zero it. One thing I really don't want to do is waste another 9 minutes or in the 3D file, say another couple hours, having it just cut air to get back to where it broke a bit or whatever else could have happened there. So what I'm going to do is, I know it's line 492, I'm going to open this up. Instead of going file part load like we normally do, we would go file, go to line, single step. Click on that. Find the part, the, the project that you wanted to do, which was the project Swiss Cheese. 
Uh, this here is just asking if you want to add offsets, repetitions, and all that. It's just a fill-in sheet. We don't want to mess with any of this, so we're going to go ahead and hit Start. Now, instead of it bringing up the spindle to turn on, it brings up this new file. And believe it or not, all you have to do to make this file work is read this. <laughs> that was my issue when I first was trying this. So let me go through it. Restart cutting within a file that was inadvertently terminated. Last line process is displayed if available in log file. You can enter or change the number manually. So for our example, 492 was the last one. For where I just hit spacebar earlier, 58 was the last one. So why does it say 57? It goes back to the last completed line. So if I was at 492, I'd actually want to put in 491, go back one file. And you can even go back a few extra lines. It won't hurt anything. So the thing, though, we have is we have the option of go to or run to. Click go to move axes at a safe Z height. This is the one you would want to recommend because uh, when you click run from here, it will work in plunging to the depth and continuing the file. So if you have a file like that bison, which has an inch and a half depth at the deepest part, and you just say run to, it's going to take a crow's fly, which is the straightest, quickest, shortest path. And if you have a little eighth inch bit and it's trying to hover over material that hasn't been cut away because you zeroed in a different spot, you just broke your bit. So I stick with the go to. And also make sure you click on that before you type in your number because it'll just disappear and then you get to type it in again. So I want to go to line 491 because that's right before where I broke my bit. So I'll say go. It's going to ask me to turn on the spindle. It's going to lift to a safe Z spot. And once it goes there, now I hit run from here. I've gone to that line and now it'll continue running the file. Now here we are back in sequence running the different numbers. So that was an example of how to start from a specific line. So let's stop this and let's go back and watch the video for that, for that in action. So we've re-zeroed our bit and since now we're moved over to a different location, this is why it's nice to use the go to versus the run to because if that was something that was trying to plunge down deep into that material it would just plunge right through my material where go to it stays at a nice safe z height until it gets over there so it's, it's re z zeroed i'm going over on the computer and i just typed in the go to line and i put it in the 491 and it brings it over at 491 and then it plunges down in and starts its cut so there, it took nine minutes to get all those other ones cut and to change that bit and get going. Think about your three or your four hour files. You know, what's going to be easiest for you? Probably this setup that I just showed you. So notice there's no dust foot on here. It makes a mess. Now notice there is a dust foot. I got my concept across of what I wanted to show you. Didn't want to have to clean up more. So I stopped the file again and put the dust foot back on. So how do you think I got it restarted once I stopped it? I actually had to stop and exit out of the file because that dust foot is a trick to put back on. But once the dust foot was back on, I went up here and I went file, go to line, single step, project Swiss cheese, yes, it's the same project. And here it brings up the screen and I actually stopped and changed it at line uh, 637. So I want to click go to and I want to go 637 because I, 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 I won't want to just have set up a restart. I want to go to that line at a safe Z height. So go there. OK to turn on spindle. Lift to the safe Z height <laughs> spot and continue on. So I actually did a second stop and a second restart. And now it's going to go ahead and just finish out the file. But the keyword of this is that was my second stop and second restart. So let me stop this and hit quit. 
and show you exactly what I'm trying to say by pointing that out. Notice in here there is now line 637, but now I've got two sets of lines. I've got last file complete at 492 for 922, and now here it added another one. Every time you run that file, it's going to put that in this in, in the same folder, and it's going to tell you how far it got, how long it ran, what date you did it, if or if it didn't get through. So let's look at one for me when I did all the video work for this, where there's plenty of starting and stopping. Look at all the different times I've ran it. It's the same file, and it it just keeps adding it into its log over and over and over again. So here's the one we just did. We stopped at line 673. I only let it run for 51 seconds because I started it at 637, ran it to 673, and I, I stopped it again. So every time you run a file, it's going to now log that. And it's very nice to know when you got to come back and reference so you can start, start up again. So let's finish this up so you can see what happened here. We put the dust foot back on, and then it's going to go ahead and continue on with the different uh, cutting. You can see that it's pocketing out the entire thing versus leaving a little scrap in between. A little scrap piece could break the bit, could get sucked up into the dust collector. might take just a little bit longer to pocket it, but it's saving me from any handwork afterwards. And then finally it's just going to finish up and begin before you pull out your screws or turn off your vacuum verify that it's all the way through the holes are to the right size especially the way I just pulled that off there with the screws you're never gonna line it exactly back up so make sure the part is right before and some of you guys are gonna wanna start going in here and messing around with the codes and some of this different stuff too you can come in here and learn a lot about you know what these different codes are it's all in that three ring binder that comes with your machine also in shopbot 3 underneath the help menu you have stuff in here for referencing and editing part files and codes but what we were concentrating on today is this file go to line in a single step where I can come in here if I broke a bit or I needed a restart from a file maybe I'm a classroom teacher and I, I had to stop it I couldn't come back till the next day as long as I didn't uh, unbolt my part and I zeroed it back in the same spot I can restart from that same file uh, when you're running a file and you do hit pause or stop it will always tell you <laughs> the last line when you hit stop hit the last line that it was at but to also have it so it'll pop up for you to always show you in on your part Go in here to values and go down here to display values. Turn on write part file logs to write and write system log to write. Having those two on will have that stuff for you. And again, this is real useful for breaking bits, for restarting. Also think about these big files here, which are three, four hour files, and you know, you're an hour and a half in and you know you gotta change a bit or something happens you, you don't really want to have to sit there and cut error for another hour and a half plug in the line that you left do the file go to save yourself some time try this around try this with some air cutting some scrap pieces make sure you got it figured out before you're you know three hours into that uh, nice piece of cherry that your grandfather gave you uh, practice it hope this was a good training for everyone Hope to see you next time. Thank you very much.